the complete evolution of man. This video will be dedicated to a very interesting creature called man. Yes, today we will talk about us and about you. How did we come to be? What were we like before? And how did we become what we are now? More details about everything. There are several versions about the origin of man. First version. If you have your own garden plot, then go there immediately. Find a place where cabbage grows. If you watch cabbage for a long time, you can see how children appear in it. Second version. Somewhere far away, there's a factory for the production of children. If you, for example, need a child, you can write a letter to this plant, and a real stork will bring you the baby. A lot of storks work as couriers transporting children by air. They even made a full-length cartoon about it. Third version. God created man in his own image and likeness. This guy created Adam and Eve. These were the first people. This is a very long story about an apple, about a snake, and there was, um, someone else. In the fourth version, another guy named Darwin decided that people descended from monkeys, which greatly angered God's supporters. There are also several other theories that aliens created humans. People came from the sun, from grass, and so on. Personally, I like the version that the first people were real giants, up to seven meters tall. Giants appeared from the union of gods and angels. This theory is based on ancient images of bats and controversial finds of huge humanoid skeletons. Over time, the gods stopped visiting the earth, and the giant people degenerated. In this episode, we will show you the complete evolution of man. Let's go! At first, our ancestors were bacteria. Then fish. Then fish with legs. Then lizards. Then mice. Then squirrels. And so on. We want to tell you about the long and complete chain of human evolution. And we'll start with small bacteria. According to scientists, 530 million years ago, one of the first living creatures called Pacaya appeared. The average size of this small animal was only four centimeters or one and a half inches. The body of the human ancestor was elongated and compressed at the sides. Pacaya's head was small, with two tentacles similar to the horns of a snail. The horns were probably used as an instrument of touch. It is very important to note one thing. Scientists find only very close relatives of the transitional form, which by default is considered a distant ancestor of humans. Pacaya is only a contender for the role of great-grandmother of Homo sapiens, or a creature, probably extremely similar to a human ancestor. The most important part of Pacaya's body is considered to be the notochord. This is the spine that this creature had, the same as in humans, but much smaller in size. Gradually, the notochord in such animals was overgrown, first with cartilage, and then with bones. A new round of evolution has occurred, and Arendaspis appeared. This creature was no longer Pacaya, but it has not yet become a fish. These small animals reached a length of 35 centimeters and are considered the oldest of the vertebrates, which already had a skeleton made of minerals. Arendaspis remains have been found in Australia, South America, and the Arabian Peninsula. After the analyses, scientists came to the conclusion that these remains are between 470 and 480 million years old. Arendaspis were slightly more fish-like than their worm-like ancestors. The head of these creatures was covered with a shell consisting of many scales and extending into the back. Under the head there was also a small and thin armored shield, but the tail remained mobile to escape from malicious predators. For example, from nautiloids, which could reach nine and a half meters in length, or approximately 32 feet long. Arendaspis were the first of the creatures that had small records. 
In the future, as a result of evolution, these plates will become real full-fledged teeth. The exoskeleton of Erendaspis was well developed, but inside this failed fish was soft like a meat stew. And this creature is called coelacanth. Scientists consider coelacanth not only to be a transitional link from a half fish to a real fish. This amazing species of ancient inhabitants of the oceans is called the fish that conquered time. 500 million years ago, coelacanths inhabited the aquatic part of the Earth in large numbers. For a long time it was believed that they disappeared from our planet approximately 66 million years ago. However, in 1938, a living specimen was miraculously discovered. This amazing find became a super sensation in the scientific world. Today there are two species from this order, which are called coelacanths. It is a large fish that can reach 2 meters in length and weigh up to 100 kilograms or 220 pounds. The lifespan of modern coelacanths is more than 100 years. The coelacanth is a deep sea fish that is difficult to observe in its natural habitat. To study this interesting fish, researchers use underwater cameras and apparatus. This has led to some interesting discoveries. For example, it has been observed that coelacanths not only swim in the water column, but sometimes walk along the seabed using their fleshy fins, which is a rare behavior in fish. These fish walk. Incredible. By the way, do you know why we move our arms when we walk? Our brain and body thus try to perform a gait like four-legged animals do. Another interesting fish is called Chictalic. Chictalic lived 395 million years ago, and this fish had paws. Real paws that left real footprints on the sea sand. Reconstructing the stride from these tracks allowed scientists to conclude that the animal moved by bending its body from side to side. Approximately how a salamander does it. There are no traces of tail dragging. This means that the sacrum and girdle of the hind limbs have already been formed. All these signs allowed scientists to say quite confidently that these were traces of tetrapods. It can also be assumed that the most ancient tetrapods, which walked on four legs, lived not in fresh waters, but in salt waters. It was this discovery that could confound the entire theory of evolution. Because scientists do not understand what this theory makes us think about the order in which life came to land. But these are only details of evolution that cannot cast doubt on the main and popular theory. And our task is to show you the theory of human evolution as accurately as possible. 375 million years ago Devonian fish went crazy we didn't climb onto land. These fish gradually ceased to have enough air in the water. And these fish were forced to invent lungs, which replaced their gills when the water went into the sand. By the way, fish necks appeared at the same time. So that the unfortunate ancestors, squelching in the drying mud, could reach up and grab air. Chictalic also had cervical vertebrae and ribs. 10 million years. This is a very long period of time. But it took exactly 10 million years for the next link of human ancestors to appear. Ichthyostegalia began to walk through the Devonian swamps. These were the first amphibians, from which reptiles would later descend. And even later, mammals will evolve from reptiles. But we will not rush the story of the great evolution. So, here is an ancient reptile that lived 315 million years ago. Gylonomus. A small lizard measuring 20 centimeters or almost 8 inches long. This is one of the first lizards that refused to live in the water element. This creature, like all the first reptiles, laid offspring in water, but was itself independent of water. 
reptiles divided into two large groups. These are amphibians and amniotes. Amphibians remain forever tied to water, and amniotes became the direct ancestors of mammals. Some more time passed. A large group of animals appear on Earth, cynodonts. This was the transitional link from reptiles to mammals. These animals carried eggs, but were already covered with hair and reached large sizes. Some cynodon species were massively built and could grow up to two meters in length or up to six and a half feet in length. Mammals began to evolve. The reptiles didn't stop there either. Some creatures from reptiles began to evolve. Some crazy reptile decided to stand on its hind legs and gradually began to turn into the first dinosaur. Some of the first dinosaurs could even reach decent speed. By the way, cynodonts were not yet true mammals. The era of gigantism flourished. Mammals were smaller than dinosaurs. All the top of the food chain were conquered by dinosaurs. Mammals had to stay in the shadows. Most dinosaurs were diurnal. Therefore, mammals had to move and feed at night. This explains the reason why mammalian vision perceives a combination of only two colors. Birds have surpassed mammals, dinosaurs, and even us humans in terms of vision. Birds' vision allows us to see our world more colorful and picturesque. But mammals have another advantage. This is the sense of smell. By the way, it was from the olfactory lobes of the brain that the cerebral hemispheres, responsible for our intellect, subsequently developed. 160 million years ago, nature created the first place food mammal. It was the ancient rat Uramaya. It is the first known mammal to grow a placenta. The mammalian placenta allows the growth of a full-fledged fetus. This is Purgatorius. This creature also resembles either a mouse or a squirrel, but it was Purgatorius that is considered the first known primate. The first primate lived 66 million years ago. By this time, flowering plants had already appeared on Earth, which gave the world nectar, juicy fruits, fragrant flowers, and, therefore, swarms of insects. All this delicious and buzzing menu had to be eaten by someone. This someone became the primatomorphs. For this reason, the ancestors of people even learned not only to actively climb trees, but also to jump. The sizes of primatomorphs were small and therefore the animals could easily and quickly hide from any predator in dense vegetation. The survival rate of the first primates was high. These little creatures were unpretentious in food and could eat anything. Omnivorousness contributed to the development of intelligence. At the same time, dinosaurs were actively dying out. If this had not happened, it is unlikely that the ancestors of people would have received evolutionary development. Purgatorius were fearless jumpers and jumped great distances. Such jumps developed the vestibular apparatus of our ancestors, which stimulated the development of neural connections in the brain. But in order to actively jump through trees and look into the distance, it is better to have eyes not on the sides of your head, but in front. So, our eyes began to move closer to each other. Another acquisition from those times. This is a grasping brush. With the help of a grasping brush, you can tenaciously hold onto branches. This can be done by both adults and cubs, who hold onto the mother's fur while jumping. After the extinction of the dinosaurs for two million years, primatomorphs became the most successful group of mammals on the planet. These creatures had no serious enemies until large birds of prey appeared. Archicebus appeared 55 million years ago. The small animal weighed only 30 grams, or less than one ounce. The length of Archicebus was seven centimeters or two and a half inches. 
This creature strongly resembled a modern Tarsia. Arcasibus was a transitional form between the dry-nosed monkeys and the dry-nosed primates. The change in the shape of our nose begins with our long-heeled ancestors. Separating the nose from the mouth contributed to better development of facial expressions. But this creature already really looks like a small monkey in the form in which contemporaries are accustomed to imagine it. This is Egyptopithecus. The creature already looks like a small monkey in the form in which we are accustomed to modern primates. Egyptopithecus lived 30 million years ago. The weight of the animal was about 6 kilograms. Egyptopithecus had a large snout and a long tail. He ate plant foods and led a diurnal lifestyle. Sedanius. This monkey was the size of a baboon and weighed 20 kilograms. The creature lived in a humid, warm forest 28 million years ago. Sedanius marks the separation of the ape species from the hominoid species. This was the last ancestor that had features of both. At that time, our forefathers will finally part with their monkey past. In the 18th and 19th centuries, all chimpanzee performers in the circus had a name that was popular at the time, Proconsul. Scientists took this name as a basis and named the progenitor of the chimpanzee Proconsul. This means a monkey that lived before the chimpanzee. Proconsuls and related species existed not only before the appearance of chimpanzees, but also other great apes. Primates lived 25 million years ago. During this period of time, most species of apes lost their tails. The tail is convenient for holding onto branches, but only if you are small. Proconsuls are also considered the last common ancestors separating humans from chimpanzees, gorillas, and orangutans. Afterwards, our paths with the orangutans will diverge forever. About 10 million years ago, the ancestors of gorillas and chimpanzees separated from the human lineage. Macalopithecus appeared. The appearance of this creature is unknown due to the scarcity of finds. Most likely, Macalopithecus walked on four limbs, climbed trees and ate seeds and nuts, as evidenced by a thick layer of enamel on the teeth. Scientists believe that Macalopithecus africa was similar to Aurinopithecus, which lived 8 million years ago in northern Greece. Aurinopithecus had a large and wide face with rectangular eye orbits, rather large body sizes and prominent fangs and nails. But Aurinopithecus was not our ancestor. And the existence in Africa about 8 million years ago of Nacolopithecus and others like it proves that human ancestors came from Africa. Saolanthropus. This is the most controversial creature from the point of view of paleoanthropologists. Scientists were divided into two camps and are still arguing. Did Sahelanthropus walk on two legs or move on four? Sahelanthropus had a large brain, like that of modern chimpanzees or four times smaller than that of humans. When the remains of a creature named Ororan, who lived six million years ago, were found in Kenya in 2000, newspapers immediately dubbed him Millennium Man. In the local dialect, the word Ororan also sounds pathetic, first man. Most scholars believe Ororan is definitely our ancestor, although there are those who doubt it. What did Ororan look like? Looks just like a monkey. Ororan had small teeth relative to the size of his body. The creature had a rounded head and an elongated neck. The next evolutionary step was Ardipithecus. The human ancestor lived on Earth for four years about a million years ago. Ardipithecus was already upright or was approaching this type of locomotion. These creatures also had very long arms reaching to their knees. Walking on two legs was a necessary element of the great ape. In the forests, these monkeys did not need to move on their hind limbs. The main means of transportation were hands. 
but when the forests began to turn into savannas, the need for walking increased many times over. Firstly, primates, when in open areas, often rose on their hind legs to observe a predator or find something interesting. Secondly, moving on four legs in hot climates always expends more energy than moving on two legs. Less area of the moving body means less heating of the body itself. It was due to the heating of the body that the long, thick fur turned into short and thin. Lush hair remained only on the head to protect this head from deadly ultraviolet radiation. Primates no longer needed to hold onto tree branches with their hands or run through trees with their hands. Nature has found another use for the hands of the future man. These were stones that flew into the heads of evil predators and then into the victims. Three and a half million years ago, the first tools appeared. Why were these weapons needed? Such primitive tools made it easier to butcher prey and scrape meat from bones. And eating meat helped the brain grow. The making of tools itself, as well as the increasingly complex communication of our ancestors, necessary for effective hunting, also helped the brain grow. Australopithecus afarensis The famous skeleton of Australopithecus afarensis was found in 1974 in Ethiopia. Scientists named the discovery Lucy in honor of the girl whom the famous Beatles sang in one of their songs. Lucy was an upright creature who lived in what is now Ethiopia three million years ago. The arms were shorter than those of Artipithecus, and the pelvis was already very similar to a human one. After all, almost no one doubts that we originated from these creatures. Australopithecines walked on two legs, but were covered with hair. The height did not exceed one and a half meters or five feet. Weight reached 55 kilograms or 121 pounds. Australopithecines walked on slightly bent legs and had curved fingers and toes, with hips resembling those of a chimpanzee. Australopithecus collected plant food and probably already knew how to make simple tools from wood and stone. But not for hunting, but in order to separate meat from the bones of animals killed by predators. Australopithecus probably ate carrion and finished off others. But future people lived in families in which there was one main male and several females. Homo habilis or Homo habilis lived one and a half million years ago. Name he became the first to regularly use tools, and it was with him that the rapid growth of the brain began. His body is already much more human-like than that of Australopithecines but his face is not yet very much. Although the size of the jaws and teeth has already become smaller and the brain has become larger. In appearance, Habilis still somewhat resembled Australopithecus. The structure of the larynx shows that the Habilis could not yet pronounce as many sounds as we pronounce. However, they probably already had the rudiments of speech. Homo erectus or Homo erectus appeared, who lived 800,000 years ago. It was then that these demi-humans probably tried to use fire for the first time. Outwardly, they were already noticeably similar to us, and their brain volume was slightly smaller than ours. Homo erectus already lived in caves, used wooden spears and sometimes cooked food over fire. The erectuses were still low only one and a half meters in height. Their body was similar to ours, except with more developed hair, but the facial features still remained rather archaic. Homo erectus were engaged in gathering, eating roots, berries, and other gifts of the plant world. But periodically they went out hunting. Carrion was no longer the main meat diet. The remains of rhinoceroses, elephants, Giraffes and hippos were found near their fire pits. Erectus were capable of hunting very large prey. These people were constantly in danger. This circumstance forced the first people to unite into large family groups. 
These communities lived in small settlements. Research shows that the settlements were permanent. Heidelberg Man Heidelberg people of Africa 500,000 years ago. Some scientists believe that these people already knew how to build primitive huts. By historical standards, there was very little time left before the emergence of Homo sapiens. And he appeared. According to various estimates, this happened from 200 to 45,000 years ago. The Heidelberg people were tall, almost like us. Males reached 175 centimeters in height or 68 inches. Women were up to 150 centimeters or 59 inches tall. The men weighed about 62 kilograms or 136 pounds. And the women's weight was 51 kilograms or 112 pounds. The structure of the ear shows that they had approximately the same auditory sensitivity as modern people, so they could distinguish many different sounds. It is also shown that they were right-handed. They knew how to make high-quality tools, but no traces of any art were found among them. Neanderthals and other founders of the human race were not included in the evolution of modern man due to complete extinction. But there are still many mysteries to be solved in order to fully understand the history of our land. Five hundred thousand years ago, in the dim distant past, Earth was home to no less than twelve different species of humans. This was an era when our ancestors lived in a world far from the modern one. Each of these species had its own unique characteristics, adapted to different environments and lifestyles. This was an era when humanity had not yet achieved its dominant position on the planet, and the struggle for survival was harsh and unpredictable, as in the wildest corners of the modern world. Imagine this ancient picture. At one end of the planet lived muscular, cold-adapted Neanderthals who survived thanks to their strength and patience. At the other end are the elegant and graceful Denisovans, adapted to live in conditions where other species could not survive. And between them are ancient people whose names are not even preserved in historical archives, but who played their role in the history of evolution. Like wolf species today, these ancient people competed for resources and territory. Their life was filled with constant challenges of nature. Hunting for prey, fighting predators, adapting to a changing environment. But, unlike our time when humanity formed society and culture, in those days each species existed in its own world independently of the others. Over time, some of these species began to displace others, taking their place in the history of the Earth. Neanderthals, for example, are considered one of the most famous representatives of ancient people. Their fate remains one of the most fascinating mysteries of evolution. And while other species may have vanished into oblivion, their legacy lives on in our genes, a reminder that evolution is not a static process, but a continuous struggle to survive and adapt to a changing environment. Perhaps if these ancient people had had more time or luck, we would be talking about a very different human history today. Imagine an ancient landscape, imbued with mysticism and adventure, where every corner of the earth is imbued with the history of our ancient ancestors. Traveling back in time two million years, we meet primitive Homo erectus roaming the ancient expanses of Asia. These ancient people, although possessing significant physical abilities, were forced to fight for their survival in a world where danger lurked at every turn. We move into the depths of the Altai Mountains and meet Denisovsky Man, 
fleeing the teeth of saber-toothed tigers in the shelters of caves. The terrible roars of predators were heard at night, but even in this harsh environment, ancient people found ways to survive, developing hunting and defense techniques. We move west to the Libyan savanna, where Rhodesian man, who lived some 600,000 years ago, hid from lions. In packs, hens sought safety and food by learning to use fire and creating tools for defense against the predators whose menacing silhouettes lurked in the darkness. Now let's move to the cold expanses of Eurasia, where flocks of Neanderthals survived on the edge of the ice. Muscular and powerful, they were hunters adapted to harsh environments. Although they did not have a developed language, their social structures and means of communication allowed them to coordinate hunting and defense against danger. These different species of ancient humans, each with their own unique traits and methods of survival, filled our planet with their presence, leaving their mark on human history. The fate of the Neanderthals, the mysterious ancestors of modern humans, remains one of the most fascinating mysteries in the history of our species. As Homo sapiens, or modern humans, began to gain strength and spread across the planet, Neanderthals faced inevitable competition for resources, territory, and perhaps even genetic materials. For many years, Scientists have tried to unravel the mystery of the disappearance of the Neanderthals. After all, they were among the most advanced and adapted to the harsh conditions of life on Earth. The Neanderthal brain, much larger in size than the brain of Homo sapiens, caused surprise and admiration among scientists. And yet, despite their superiority in some aspects, the Neanderthals disappeared and Homo sapiens continued their triumphal march across the planet. One hypothesis explains the extinction of Neanderthals through competition for resources with Homo sapiens. Modern humans may have been more successful at hunting, gathering, and using tools, which gave them an advantage in the struggle for survival. Additionally, Homo sapiens may have been more adaptive to a changing environment and had more complex social structures, which gave them an advantage in competition for resources. Another hypothesis involves genetic exchange between Homo sapiens and Neanderthals. Modern genomic studies show that modern humans in Eurasia have a certain percentage of Neanderthal genes, which may indicate that at some point there was some level of hybridization between the two species. It is possible that this genetic exchange somehow contributed to the extinction of the Neanderthals, perhaps by making them less competitive in the struggle for survival. The ancient pages of human history are filled with mysteries, and one of the most fascinating is the one that concerns the fate of the Neanderthals. Despite their powerful physical characteristics and high adaptability to harsh environments, Neanderthals seem to have lost the battle for survival with Homo sapiens. Studies of bones and fossils indicate that for a long time on Earth there was rivalry between these two types of people. Numerous lesions on the bones found in Neanderthals may indicate that in the historical past there were fights and conflicts between them and Homo sapiens. This war of survival, which lasted for an incredible hundred thousand years, became a key moment in the evolution of our species. Neanderthals and Homo sapiens first met approximately a million years ago in Africa. However, approximately 500,000 years ago, 
Neanderthals began to migrate north, leaving the African continent. They overcame the spaces of the Middle East, penetrated into the future Russia and Europe, reaching the borders of the eternal ice in the north. For Neanderthals, these territories presented difficult challenges, but it was here that they demonstrated their outstanding endurance and adaptability. They developed sophisticated hunting strategies, created tools, and learned to survive in harsh climates. However, the time came when the fate of the Neanderthals turned upside down. With the arrival of Homo sapiens in the same territories, fierce competition for resources began. The struggle for survival took on a new, even more brutal aspect, and, unfortunately, the Neanderthals found themselves in a losing position. Perhaps factors such as more complex social structures, advanced communication skills and more efficient hunting strategies helped Homo sapiens emerge victorious in this ancient war of survival. Neanderthals, despite their outstanding abilities, were unable to resist this new enemy. Deep in ancient times, when the world was saturated with wildlife and fear of the unknown, Neanderthals fought for their survival on the cold expanses of the planet. They became ideal hunters, learning the skill of hunting prey, which became a necessity for survival in cold conditions. Meat became their key source of nutrition, becoming a symbol of the struggle for life in the harsh conditions of the cold part of the planet. Like any predators, Neanderthals defended their territory and prey from competitors. They masterfully wielded tools made from stones and had physical strength that allowed them to successfully defeat their opponents. But the most dangerous enemy for them was Homo sapiens, who, in turn, also began their journey to the north, leaving their native expanses of Africa. As soon as the swarms of Homo sapiens multiplied and began their migratory journey to the north, the Great War began between different species of humanity. Neanderthals, feeling threatened by Homo sapiens, stood up to defend their land and resources. Rivalry for territory and access to food escalated into a deadly struggle for survival. Neanderthals and Homo sapiens waged their war on spanning hundreds of thousands of years, alternating with battles, hunting, and defense. Bloody skirmishes filled with fear and excitement have left their mark on the history of human evolution. Both species have shown their remarkable ability to survive and adapt to harsh environments. What unfolds before us is a picture of ancient struggles and struggles for survival, depicted in bones and fossils unearthed by archaeologists. It was during this period, during the era of antiquity, when the world was saturated with wilderness and fear of the unknown, that great battles took place between Neanderthals and Homo sapiens, leaving marks on the bones and skeletons of both species. Archaeological finds indicate that both species were involved in violent fights. Marks of mutilation and weapon trauma found on the bones of Neanderthals and Homo sapiens suggest that clashes were inevitable. Injuries from blunt objects such as stones and clubs are particularly common, especially among young men killed or injured in combat. Neanderthal fossils often show signs of such impacts, suggesting that they were embroiled in brutal battles over territory and resources. On the other hand, finds of Homo sapiens, for example, in the Alps and the USA, indicate the use of knives and spears in battles. 
In Africa, archaeologists have discovered a tribe of 27 people who died 13,000 years ago, indicating large-scale battles and clashes between these ancient communities. The war for territory and resources could not pass quickly and painlessly. The clashes were brutal, but the small number of packs of primitive people and their limited resources made each battle bloody. Neanderthals were known for their strength and endurance, and each of them was an opponent worth a dozen Homo sapiens. These battles were reminiscent of clashes between great armies, where each warrior was ready to sacrifice his life for his flock and his land. The era of clashes between Neanderthals and Homo sapiens resembled a saga of survival, with each side fighting for its place in the sun with fierce tenacity and determination. The rivalry between these two species of humanity, the battle for survival, lasted for many millennia, leaving traces in the vastness of antiquity. Neanderthals were remarkable hunters and warriors, born killers with skills honed by centuries of thousands of years of hunting and survival. They were muscular, hardy, with excellent eyesight, adapted to the harsh conditions of the Ice Age. Their strength and endurance made them dangerous opponents, even for the more advanced Homo sapiens. However, the Neanderthals faced an enemy who was no less persistent and persistent in the struggle for survival. Homo sapiens, with more developed social structures and technological advantages, entered into a battle where every moment was precious. For 100,000 years of war the conflicts between Neanderthals and Homo sapiens gave way to periods of pauses and deadlocks, when conflicts reached the stage of exhaustion. Some researchers argue that Homo sapiens were able to completely exterminate the Neanderthals only after 75,000 years, overcoming resistance and capturing enemy territory. One of the possible reasons for the victory of Homo sapiens over Neanderthals could be the improvement of throwing weapons. The use of bows, spears and slings allowed sapiens to increase their fighting distance while avoiding direct confrontation with the muscular but slow Neanderthals. Ambush tactics and long-distance escape strategies served Homo sapiens in their struggle for survival. The era of ancient battles and the struggle for survival in the vastness of planet Earth remains one of the most mysterious chapters in the history of mankind. Among the many hypotheses and versions, one of them stands out the one that says that Homo sapiens may simply have been larger in numbers, and this gave them an advantage in the struggle for survival. The migration of Homo sapiens during the Ice Age thaw may have freed them from the resource and food constraints that had contributed to the conflict and decline of other human species. While Homo sapiens expanded their territories and found new food sources, other species were forced to adapt to harsh conditions or face extinction. In light of new data and research, it is becoming clear that Neanderthals were far from being as primitive as they were previously thought. They had a complex social structure, could bury their dead and even painted pictures on the walls of caves. Such facts discard old ideas about them as simple and stupid creatures. However, Despite all this, the truth about the harsh times in human history remains that there were once 12 species of people living on Earth, and only one of them survived. Homo sapiens, pursuing their goals and striving for dominance, showed no mercy to their rivals. Raid after raid, valley after valley, 
Homo sapiens crushed other representatives of the human race. Neanderthals, the strongest and most powerful of all species, disappeared about 24,000 years ago, becoming the last to fall victim in this ancient war. In their quest for power and supremacy, Homo sapiens wiped out other human species from the face of the Earth, leaving only traces of their existence in stone remains and archaeological finds. Today we send ships into space in search of other life on distant stars, building telescopes, looking for answers to questions about the origin of the universe. But at the same time, we must remember that we ourselves once destroyed other forms of life on our home planet, remembering the lessons of the past so as not to repeat mistakes in the future. Greetings to all our subscribers. All those who are interested in the evolution of our Earth, historical facts about dinosaurs and other creatures that lived millions of years ago. Today our episode is dedicated to a period of time that has passed relatively recently compared to the times when dinosaurs lived. We will begin the story from the moment when man appeared. So, let's go! We live with you in the modern world. Humanity stands at the highest stage of evolution. But this only seems to us. Changes are happening to us people too. But very slowly. Just some 500 years ago, a person would have considered speeding supersonic planes and fast cars a miracle. And would have considered space flights to be devilish tricks and blasphemy. There is nothing to say about computers, phones, and the internet. The Knights of the Middle Ages would have mass hysteria. And this is only some 500 years ago. What can we say about a thousand years ago? About millions of years ago. Changes are happening to us. Very slower than we realize, but very fast compared to the changes that took place millions of years ago and the structure of our body and organism also undergoes changes. In a couple of thousand years, we may look something like this. Or maybe even this. Or maybe so. Now we're going back in time. About four million years ago, when the monkey was still a very common monkey. But this was already the most ancient human ancestor. Man did not descend from apes. He essentially remained a monkey. Only modern. Reasonable. And at times civilized. But what happened anyway? Many millions of years ago. Then began the exact moment when changes slowly began to occur in her body. They happened very slowly. Thousands years. The first modifications appeared when the monkey was no longer a monkey, but it was still far from being human. There is a theory that a group of monkeys that lived on the future African continent five million years ago split up and dispersed over a vast territory. From one group, humans emerged, and the other transformed into the closest species to humans that we know today. It's a chimpanzee. One group evolved into hominids and you and I appeared and the other stopped in evolution. But the chimpanzee is by far the most intelligent animal and very closely similar in development to humans. 
and it is likely that after many years the chimpanzee will become the creatures that will look like the characters from the cult films about the planet of the apes. The group of hominid monkeys that turned into humans was facilitated by earthly disasters, forest fires, floods and, as a result, temperature changes. Nature forced the monkeys to come down from the trees. But on the ground they had to learn completely new methods of survival. A change in diet and a different defense against enemies turned primates into intelligent monkeys. Then it was the predators who greatly contributed to the development of the future man. And it was they who forced the monkey to pick up a stone from the ground and use it as a weapon. We all evolve, like other creatures on the planet, continuously and every day. We just have to understand that such a process is very leisurely and very slow, lasting thousands and thousands of years. All living beings on our planet had common ancestors. But evolution never tries to create something intelligent. In all cases, it depends on the creatures themselves. Circumstances of life that can go one way or another. And therefore, several million years passed before man became man. But let's go back to the Miocene era 10 million years ago. It was then that the Miocene Dryopithecus already existed. They were half terrestrial, half arboreal apes. Dryopithecus lived in the tropical rainforests of Africa, but their traces of activity in bones were also found in the forest steppes. But there are also known facts of their residence in Eastern Europe and in the territory of the modern Caucasus. For 0.2 to 1 million years ago, evolution created a new species from Dryopithecus Australopithecus, which is considered the closest to the ancestral form of humans. Australopithecus also lived in Africa. His body was covered with thick hair. And in appearance, he was closer to a monkey than to a man. However, he already walked on two legs and used various objects as tools, which was facilitated by the spaced big toe. The volume of his brain was smaller than that of a human, but larger than that of modern apes. This species was divided into three groups early Australopithecines, who lived from four to seven million years ago. Grassel Australopithecines two to four million years ago. And the massive Australopithecus from one to two and a half million years ago. Judge for yourself how slowly the evolution of the transformation from monkey to man occurs. It was in Australopithecus that signs of upright walking began to appear and the structure of the skull changed. Australopithecus played a significant role in human evolution. The species Homo sapiens, or Homo sapiens, traces its roots to Australopithecines, splitting from a common root with Australopithecines approximately 3 million years ago, and this group was called the Evolutionary Group. For 3 million years these creatures were nothing more than apes, walking human-like on two legs, albeit hunched over. Perhaps in the end they knew how to use available stones to crack, for example, nuts. The life expectancy of Australopithecus, which was constantly under threat not only from predators, but also from some large herbivores, 
was insignificant and averaged 20 years. Almost none of them lived to be 40 years old, and one in seven lived to be 30. The next link in evolution was made up of a new group Pithecanthropus, translated from Greek, monkey man. Pithecanthropus appeared about one and a half million years ago. The short stature of the future man was a little more than one and a half meters. In terms of brain volume, Pithecanthropus occupied an intermediate position between Homo habilis on the one hand and Neanderthal man and Homo sapiens on the other. A skilled person had a brain volume that was half that of most modern adults. What did Pithecanthropus do well? Of course, their main occupation was searching for food. And in addition to collecting edible herbs and berries, they were already hunting various animals with might and main because the vegetation was not enough for the body, which already required proteins and fats. Parts of the skeletons of rhinoceroses, elephants, hippopotamuses, and giraffes were discovered near the bones of Pithecanthropus. There were stone tools nearby. Paleontologists also found the first tools used by Pithecanthropus. The danger from wild animals and climatic conditions forced them to do this. Living in large groups made it easier to hunt large animals that were distinguished by their remarkable strength and speed of movement. In addition to hunting, Pithecanthropus could engage in fishing, most often catching fish with their bare hands. In the next stage of evolution, Neanderthals appeared approximately 500,000 years ago. To date, it has been proven that Neanderthals are not the direct ancestors of modern humans. Their common ancestor has not yet been precisely established. It is attributed either to the human predecessor or to the Heidelberg people of Africa. Neanderthals were shorter and broader in the shoulders than modern humans, but they also had a larger brain and may have been able to speak. They also already made tools. Wooden spears with stone tips, scrapers, axes, They actively used fire. They ate mainly meat, although they also ate plants. In addition, Neanderthals used medicinal plants. There is also evidence beyond treating diseases. These are the burial places of deceased family members. Traces of rituals in the first worship of deities. Initially, a few Neanderthals could have mixed with representatives of more numerous populations, with Denisovans, possibly with Cro-Magnons, as the authors interpret the results of genetic studies. But some geneticists suggest that the presence of Neanderthal and Denisovan genes in modern people could have appeared not as a result of their hybridization, but from polymorphism of the genes of their common ancestor, with whom the evolutionary branches of modern people, Neanderthals and Denisovans diverged earlier 700 to 765,000 years ago. Well, the final stage of development was the Cro-Magnons, who appeared much later than the Neanderthals. The Cro-Magnon man is the ancestor of all modern humans, appearing in East Africa approximately 130 to 180,000 years ago. They were actually no different from modern humans. The Cro-Magnons inherited from their ancestors a large active brain and quite practical technology, thanks to which they took an unprecedented step forward in a relatively short period of time. This manifested itself in aesthetics, the development of communication and symbol systems, tool-making technology and active adaptation to external conditions, 
as well as in new forms of social organization and a more complex approach to one's own kind. The Cro-Magnons lived in communities of 20 to 100 people and created settlements for the first time in history. The Cro-Magnons, like the Neanderthals, lived in caves and tents made of skins. In Eastern Europe they built dugouts, and in Siberia they built huts made of stone slabs. They had articulate speech, built houses, and dressed in clothes made from skins. They lived in a tribal society and tamed a dog, succeeded in hunting wild animals. It was the Cro-Magnons from Africa who began to gradually move west. Both the remains of these human ancestors and their cave paintings were discovered in France. They were 6,000 years old. We live on Earth in a relatively safe period of time. Of course, modern humanity is at mortal risk. Military conflicts, revolutions in countries, hunger in the world, natural disasters, hurricanes, earthquakes, tsunamis and eruptions. But this is not very radical compared to what happened during the life of prehistoric people. At the time, prehistoric man was smart enough. He wore a piece of mammoth skin around his mighty waist and he fearlessly fought the saber-toothed tigers. He went hunting and lit a fire. And he taught his children to survive in a ruthless world that was filled not only with insidious predators, but also with unpleasant surprises from Mother Nature. In ancient legends and drawings in the caves, you can read a lot of strange and surprising things. The Aztecs cherished their ancient chronicles inherited from their distant ancestors. Find, say, heavy rain of flaming fiery stones, and blood began to fall from the sky. It fell on the houses, and the houses burst into flames. It fell on the forests, and swallowed the forests. People were looking for shelter, but their clothes were on fire, and they were dying. Falling hot rocks shook the planet. When it was all over, thick dark clouds covered the earth for a long 25 years. This chronicle indicates a massive fall of meteorites, as a result of which a real apocalypse began on earth. To date, we can observe isolated cases of the fall of small meteorites. For example, in 1908, the Tunguska meteorite fell on the territory of Russia. In the early morning, a large fireball flew over the territory of the Kresnoise territory at fantastic speed, which a few seconds later fell into the Taiga. The sound of the explosion was heard at a distance of more than 1,000 kilometers. The blast wave was recorded by seismographs around the world. The power of the explosion was 1040 megatons and tint equivalent, which corresponds to the energy of an average hydrogen bomb. The explosion knocked down trees over an area of 2,000 square kilometers. A man who was 70 kilometers from the epicenter of the explosion told the following. Suddenly, in the north, the sky split in two and a fire appeared in it wide and high above the forest, which engulfed the entire northern part of the sky. At that moment, I felt so hot as if my shirt was on fire. I wanted to tear and throw off my shirt, but the sky slammed shut, and there was a strong blur. I was thrown three meters off the porch. After the blow, there was such a knock as if stones were falling from the sky or firing from cannons. The earth trembled, and when I lay on the ground, I pressed my head, fearing that the stones would not break my head. At that moment, when the sky opened up, a hot wind swept from the north. Light from a cannon, which left traces in the form of paths on the ground. Then it turned out that many of the panes in the windows were broken, and the iron tab for the door lock was broken near the barn. Subscribe to our channel, give it a thumbs up and leave a comment. Don't forget to ring the bell so you don't miss new and interesting releases from our channel. 13,000 years ago, 
ancient people did not even suspect that something terrible could happen to them. At the time, the era of global drought that lasted 100,000 years was ending. The drought was so severe that trees could only grow near the equator. And it's very unusual. Ancient people already lived everywhere, including America and Australia. But they lived so badly that it could be called survival. Outside the equatorial zone, during the Ice Age, summer deserts began to feed only small groups of wandering hunters. The northern steppes were the main source of food for humans. Whole herds of mammoths lived there. Temperatures in the tundra steppes ranged from 50 in summer to 50 in winter. It was difficult to survive in such conditions, even with fire and clothing made of skins. Nevertheless, it was the steppes, where the climate was harsh, but at least food was available in abundance, turned out to be the most populated territory. Approximately 12,800 years ago, something changed the global climate very dramatically, dropping the average annual temperature by 5 degrees at once, and very quickly, in just a year or two. What could it be? American scientists have found the answer to this question. They explored the layers of soil and found nanodiamonds. The first nanodiamonds were discovered in the Soviet Union, at the sites of nuclear tests. We understand how they were formed after a nuclear explosion. Everything is very simple. The explosion compressed the carbon particle and turned out to be a nanodiamond. But 13,000 years ago, there was no atomic bomb. Then there were only mammoths and they could not arrange a nuclear explosion. Nanodiamonds are available over the world. Diamonds are estimated to be 60 million years old. 65 million years ago, a 10-kilometer asteroid made a real nuclear apocalypse. But what happened 13,000 years ago? Nanodiamonds located within a radius of 50 million square kilometers indicate multiple explosions with the power of an atomic bomb. And the platinum dust found in the same place is for the fall of a comet or asteroid. Ancient Aztec tales say that thick dark clouds covered the Earth for a long 25 years. A worthy reason for a thousand year cold snap. The sun warms weakly through clouds of dust and soot. But scientists have not found a giant crater. So, almost 13,000 years ago, the asteroid did not fall to the ground. What has spread nanodiamonds all over the planet? A group of scientists put forward a version that it was a giant cunt. It's a sky cunt, not an asteroid. The fact is that comets are like asteroids, consist of snow and ice, as well as a certain amount of stones of small diameter. Its composition, unlike homogeneous asteroids, is always different for different points. Somewhere more than one metal, somewhere another. Of course, when a plane is bombarded by a cunt, picture will be similar. A cunt, or rather, many pieces of a cunt, when it enters the atmosphere, scattered throughout the Earth. Because the cunt itself is like a snowman, that, high temperatures, begins to melt and fall apart quickly. When hitting the Earth, pieces of the comet did not leave craters, because these chunks weren't hard like heavy metal chunks of an asteroid. According to scientists, the diameter of the comet was at least 100 square kilometers. Witnesses of the impact of a comet on the Earth were ancient people. For them it was terrible. Before the apocalypse, the ancient man looked at the sky and watched an incredibly beautiful sight. Two suns, one of which was the usual yellow color, and the new sun was blue. The blue sun grew bigger and more beautiful every day. In the eyes of the ancient ancestor of people there was no fear, but there was curiosity and admiration for the beauty of the new celestial body. But after such a heavenly spectacle, the most terrible thing began. The sun split into thousands of gigantic pieces that rapidly fell to the ground. Upon entering the atmosphere, clouds of snow and ice with large stones exploded and turned into steam. 
the cobblestones glowed red hot and became a fiery rain. Particularly large pieces of ice flew to the ground and set off explosions of several thousand megatons. This is absolutely identical to nuclear explosions. Ancient mankind experienced all the delights of a nuclear apocalypse. As a result of monstrous blows, an unthinkable amount of soot rose into the air. There was much more soot than the now of a nuclear war had taken place. The Ice Age returned to the planet and lasted more than a thousand years. How did the people of the Stone Age survive during the many explosions comparable in scale to a nuclear war? There is only one answer. Most of ancient mankind perished. The stories handed down to descendants from their ancestors testify to a real apocalypse. The flames spread throughout the sky and did not touch only the people on the highest peaks. It was so hot that all the lakes in the world evaporated and dried up literally before our eyes. Even the rocks were red hot. Giant animals and evil people burned where they stood. There were also such myths similar to the truth. The great shaman called on his tribe to go to the nearest swamp and smear themselves with mud and there be save their lives from a falling star. Some laughed and did not believe him. Only a few families listened to the shaman and went to the swamps. This was their salvation. The recipe for covering the body with mud worked. They survived and founded a new tribe. The method only seems primitive. In fact, wet mud protects both from burns during close explosions and from the hot air of step fires. It seems that people 13,000 years ago were no more stupid than today. Many of them were able to serve if events equal in severity to a nuclear bombing. To think and be in time to smear yourself with mud in a swamp or build the first tree earth shelter from super powerful explosions, you had to quickly move your brains. Apparently, it was not in vain that the people of the Stone Age had an average brain 5% larger than ours. Therefore, we can say with confidence that the ancient man also had ingenuity and managed to survive in a nuclear catastrophe. If you liked the video, put your finger up and leave a comment. Subscribe if you haven't already and the bell so you don't miss new and interesting releases from the Real Unreal channel.